Good morning, and thank you for daring the cold. It's a cold one out there today. Actually, 15 below, we can live with that. I came from the North Country. I've seen 70 below air temperature. You can live with that too, but it feels really cold because you just haven't had it yet, so stay warm out there. We welcome to this fifth Sunday after Epiphany. And I don't see any kids in here that are second grade through sixth grade. Good. You have Sunday school today. I've, I saw that there are quite, <clears throat> quite a few people here. So that is wonderful to see. And I hope they have a wonderful, wonderful time. And today also starts First Communion. And I believe everybody's in there for that too. Good. These are tough times really, really hard times, and sometimes it's just so hard to come to church and just relax. And so today, let's just take some time, if you just want to even close your eyes and breathe in the breath of God. Leave behind your work and your worries. Breathe in the breath of God. Let go of your cares and your concerns. Breathe in the breath of God. Forget about tomorrow. It's gone. Forget about 
forget about yesterday, it's gone. Forget about tomorrow. It's not even here. Breathe in the breath of God. Be present. You are here. Breathe in and experience God. In Isaiah, the one God who sits above the earth and numbers the stars also strengthens the powerless. And so in Jesus' healing work, we see the hand of the creator God lifting up the sick woman to health and then back into service. And like Simon's mother-in-law, we are too lifted up, healed to serve. So following Jesus, we strengthen the powerless. And like Jesus, we seek to renew our own strength in times of quiet prayer and reflection. And so our service begins in the name of the Father and of the Son, of his Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin and receive your forgiveness and then grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our own sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare unto every single one of you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of his Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of his Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. first lesson for today comes from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out like the heavens, like a curtain, who spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and who makes rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, and scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. 
His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our psalm for today is Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the numbers of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. He has not dealt us with any You do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground, none, for boasting. For an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. Just this. What is my reward? Just this. That in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside of the law. so that I might win those who are outside of the law. And to the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people that I might by all means save some. And I do it for the sake of the gospel, so that I might share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Let us stand and say the gospel acclamation and hear the gospel. Alleluia. 
the servant of God, took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Hallelujah. The gospel today comes from Mark, of course, the first chapter. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him this at once. He came and he took her by the hand, and he lifted her up. The fever left her, and she began to serve them. And then that evening, at sunset, they brought it to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered at the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases. And he cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And then the next morning, while it was still very dark, he got up. And he went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him all over the place. And when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And Jesus answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Gwen is doing the extravaganza this weekend for youth ministers. And I heard this story, and it just, I, the, it fit the sermon today. So, again, my sermon is very different from what I had planned. But here's the story, and I, it's great. A family decided to go to a circus one day. And so they bought tickets, and off they went. And there's seats, amazing seats. They're in the front row, center stage, the center ring. Beautiful tickets. And as they were sitting there waiting for the star, the show to begin, a man started coming by and he said, peanuts, peanuts for sale. Or the young boy of the family thought, peanuts. I like peanuts. Dad, can I have a bag? And so the dad buys him a bag of peanuts. And the show is about ready to begin. The boy is struggling to get that bag of peanuts open. It's kind of like our communion sets. I don't know if you ever watched me do, try to do the first thing of showing you how to get these things open, and my, the, the bread just kind of leaps out of the thing and lands on my shoulder. It's kind of like that. It's really hard to get this bag of peanuts open, just kind of like it is to get these communion things open once in a while. But the strong man comes out. It's his first act on the show. And he comes out right in front of the boy. And here are all of these weights. And the first one is 500 pounds. And he bends over. He starts to grunt. You can hear it in the front rows, maybe a little bit further back. And he makes a massive jerk. And up above his head goes 500 pounds, and the crowd goes wild. Wow, this is amazing. I've never seen anything like this. This is just cool. And out of the corner of his eye, the strong man sees this boy working on his bag of peanuts. He missed the first whole part of his act. But he's going to go on now. And there's 750 pounds this dude is going to lift. You could see the muscles just straining on the 500 pounds, but now 750. 
and you can just see him. He's down there grunting a little bit. The muscles are starting to tense up, and all of a sudden he makes this massive jerk, and slowly the weights go above his head, and the crowd is just, wow, amazing. Incredibly impressive. And the strong man notices, there's the boy, still trying to get his bag of peanuts open. He missed my second part of the act. But now, I'm going to put these chains on, and this big truck that I've got here on this side of the ring, I am going to pull all the way across to the other side of the ring. All I got to do is do that, and I'll finally catch the attention of this boy. And so he does, and he's got his little foot brace there so he can get some traction. And he carries that truck, not carries the truck, but pulls that truck all the way across the ring. And the crowd is just going wild. Except for the little boy still trying to get his bag of peanuts open. And the, the strong man is just kind of frustrated. Goes up to the boy, grabs the peanuts, opens the peanuts, and gives it back to the boy. And the boy goes, wow, that's so neat. That's amazing, yeah. And the strong man realized something. Maybe this isn't a show. Maybe this isn't all about me. Maybe some people just need help. As I read 1 Corinthians, I think there's a big understanding that we are the good ones. We are the ones who deserve to boast because we are the people of God. We are the church. We get to do all of these things. And then we get this Paul thing that says, look out. You don't need to be the strong man who needs to show off for the world. You don't need to boast. You don't need to be in power. The Holy Spirit gives us tons of power. Never power over anyone. Never power over anyone. But the power gives, the power that the Holy Spirit gives is the power that says, point to the one who cares. The person who died on that cross, point to that. And then, like the little boy, you will hear, wow, that man is amazing. Thank you for showing me that man. Thank you for not showing me your, your wonderful power. I don't need your power. I need that person. Be involved with what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life, pointing you always to that person. And so, what we need to do is to emulate other people. We need to step in the shoes of other people. We need to understand what other people are like so that when you're talking to somebody weak, you can become weak. When you are talking to somebody outside of the law, you can become the person outside of the law. When you are talking to somebody who needs help, you can talk like somebody who also 
needs help. We need empathy as Christians. We need empathy as Christians. I think we have been given power that seems like we can save the world. We can't. We have no abilities to save the world. The guy who died on that cross has all the abilities. And that's what we need to do is point to him. Get off our pedestals and let him be on his throne. Let's stop being the the strong man who needs to have attention. And let's be that servant of the world that the only thing that we have to boast about is this. That man saved me. Just like that man saves you. Just like that man saves the world. We have a lot of answers. We have a lot of stuff that we can figure out. But I think one of the best things we can start to learn is that we need empathy. It's getting harder and harder the bigger the divide gets between people. We don't need the divide. That's the action of Satan. You can have divisions. You can have all the arguments you want. And the argument is fine. There's no problem with the argument. The, argu- the problem is, is when we divide ourselves and separate ourselves from each other. And so build on empathy. Build on that strength that you have within you to become that which everybody else needs. And then point to the one who can save everyone. Let us pray. Dear God, send your Holy Spirit into our lives and strengthen us. Give us the power we need to do what needs to be done. And Lord, we understand this. You are not going to give us power over anyone. But you're going to give us the power to walk alongside anyone. To understand what it's like to walk in their moccasins. To understand what it's like to live their life. And that's where our power comes. Help us to use it, Lord. Help us to point to you, our Savior, and their Savior. Help us to end divisions. Amen.
been sitting a long time. Let us stand and declare our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. To him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us now offer our prayers for the church, the world, all people who are in need. Dear Lord, we pray fervently for your church, for ministries where healing and wholeness happens in hospitals, hospice houses, military chaplains, be with them, for those serving in prison ministries. We pray for the bishops, pastors, and lay leaders, and all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. We pray for your creation, O Lord. We pray for insects in the grass. We pray for snow that covers the grass. We pray for clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle and rainwater that they drink. We pray for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Dear Lord, we pray for all the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, countries, states, and counties, for community organizers, school officials, CEOs, for international health organizations, and in times of trial, fear, and hopelessness, that they find freedom in service to those most in need. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. And dear Lord, we pray for all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, and for those struggling with chronic pain or other sicknesses, for those just exhausted from overwork or the stress this life is pen pouring out on people. And for all who cry out to you, especially people like Elsie, Helen, Larry, Kristen, Joyce, Lavon, Allison, Twyla, Patty, Les, Craig, Lila, Linda, Chris, Gary, David, Clarine, Phyllis, Judy, Elaine, Carl, John, John, Roger, and Bernice. And Lord, we also pray for the men and women of our armed forces. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Dear Lord, we pray for this congregation, for Christ Lutheran Church in Slayton, Minnesota. 
We pray for outreach and social ministries centered here and for those not yet begun. We pray for our health ministries team, parish nurse, and visitors. We pray for the ministries of companionship and support. We pray for the young people of this place who open us to new understandings. And we pray especially for our Sunday school students and their staff. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And however you feel comfortable, share that peace with one another. And you may be seated when you're done. I can hardly wait till we can really start moving around and talking. That was way too quick. But at this time, we usually take the offering. Like, again, of course, the offering will be taken at the back of the church. But let us say our offering prayer now. O oh God, receive our gifts as you receive us. Like a mother who receives her child with arms wide open. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. During communion today, I'll say the words of institution. And while I'm saying that, if you just want to get your communion kits open, and then after we're done with the Lord's Prayer, we'll do the um, actual taking of the bread and wine. In the night which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take and eat. This is my body and it's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again after supper he took the cup and after he had given thanks, he poured it for all, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you, and it is shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you unto his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ Jesus, 
At this table, we have feasted on your very life. And we are now strengthened, empowered for our journey. So send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and spirit, so that we may walk with our brothers and sisters, whoever they are, to proclaim you, to proclaim your good news, and to serve everyone in your name. Amen. The Sunday school students and teachers here, I don't think they're here yet. I don't know when they're going to. Oh, I saw some wave. But yeah. Does anybody know if they're out there? Those of you who are on the radio, we're just kind of waiting here, <laughs> trying to figure out who's here and who isn't. Um, This is so hard. How do you manage to get the timing just right? How about we sing? Uh, what's a favorite song that somebody has? Can we just do like Amazing Grace? Would that work? I'm seeing Brenda go, yeah, but I have to find the music. <laughs> We're getting there. I wish I knew the hymn number right off the top of my head, but I don't. 779. I suspect we all have it memorized. But if we don't, once we get going with it, we'll go, oh, yeah, I know it. <laughs> Sorry to do this to you, Brenda. You're good, though. <laughs> Two verses. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm You're wonderful. Our teachers are way in the back, and I'll just let them stay standing. Let us pray for them. God of knowledge, we give you thanks for our parish head board, past and present, faithful teachers, helpers, and many more who teach our children. You have called them to serve you in your kingdom, and you alone empower them with all the gifts they need in this vocation. And Lord, continue to bless your church with faithful, dedicated teachers who seek to be your voice to those who learn. Support them with their love, your love, comfort, joy, and peace in all that they do. And Lord, Help us, the rest of this church here, to support these people in their needs, to pray for them, and to be there when they need someone to lean on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, students, if you'd like to stand, that'd be wonderful. If you don't want to, well, fine. <laughs> but let us pray for our, our students. Creator God, Bless all of our children as they begin Sunday school for the first time this school year. Lord, we have missed this. Help them to learn more about you and how much you love them. Help them treat their teachers and classmates with respect and share your love with everyone they meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great year. Rest of the year, teachers, students, I hope you have a ton of fun. We deserve to have, oh, I don't like that word. It's good to have fun. It's good. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
the Lord make his face just shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance, his favor upon you all, and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of his Holy Spirit. Amen. in peace. Walk with your neighbor. Understand who your neighbor really is. Be the light of Christ.